Hey everybody, I'm Jace Allen. Welcome back to the Guitar Dungeon. And today, I'm playing around with a Fostex MR8 MK2 digital multi-track recorder. So, stick around. So if you've been watching the channel, uh, you know that I'm, this summer I decided that I was going to sort of play around with uh, home studio recording techniques, and I have some videos coming on uh, four track and eight track cassette uh, machines, and uh, hopefully uh, coming soon a reel to reel uh, segment. Uh, I'm in the market for reel to reels and I've got my eye on a couple of them and uh, so uh, and mixers and things of that nature. Uh, so today I received this gem. This is a Fostex multi-track recorder. It's an MR8 MK2 and uh, I got this used and uh, so uh, we're going to play around with it and uh, see what it can do. So let's get started. So I received this today in the mail. I uh, bought it used. Um, and uh, it is basically brand new. Um, it has been very well taken care of. Uh, it was a little dusty when I got it. There is some dust between the glass and the LCD screen, uh, which I might have to take take it apart to kind of get rid of that. It might not even impact, uh, impact it anyway, uh, so I might just leave it alone. But uh, anyway, it's in perfect condition. Uh, it didn't come with a power supply, so uh, I have one here. It's a 12-volt uh, center positive. Uh, power supply and I'll plug that right in and then there's the switch is right here uh, You can go off on or light and light means it'll backlight all these uh, These buttons light up and I think your your screen will backlight too uh, But for now so we can see we don't have the problem. So we'll just turn it on And you can see it'll do it'll go through a self-test See everything comes on and then you have your your uh, LCD display. And so let's talk about this uh, real quick. It's uh, a two inputs, uh, input A, input B, uh, XLR balanced XLR inputs, or you can do the unbalanced uh, quarter inch inputs. And an uh, interesting thing about this machine, it has a built-in microphone. So you can record on input A with the built-in microphone, or you can record on input A uh, with some onboard uh, guitar effects. So the input selector switch for input A is internal microphone, guitar, or mic line. And so we're gonna keep it at mic line because we're gonna import some drum tracks into uh, channel one. Um, set up like a, sort of like a the old four track cassette recorders. Uh, you have four mono in, uh, channels and two stereo channels and then your master. And then you have left and right pan for your mono channels. Uh, record enable for all your channels. Uh, effects send for uh, channels one through four. And then this, this is your effects. You can do reverb delay, uh, room hall, plate, or delay. Uh, over here, these are your amp. See, I said it, you can plug your guitar into it. It has a little knob here for distortion. Uh, so you can uh, raise and lower the amount of distortion. And it has a couple different, or a few different uh, amp simulators. 60s combo, US metal, Brit stack, and then mic simulation. And that's for the internal microphone. You can do dynamic condenser or tube mic. So we'll have to play around with that and see what that does. Uh, quarter inch stereo output. Don't know if they're balanced or not. Uh, two headphone jacks, which is interesting. So if you're working with somebody, uh, you can, you know, if say you're mixing and somebody else is singing, you each get your own set of headphones for monitoring. Uh, down here you have uh, regular transport buttons like you would on a cassette deck. Play, record, stop, rewind, fast forward. And then you have got a bunch of other buttons here for different things. It actually does mastering which uh, we'll have to mess around with that because it's bright, natural, or powerful. I find that kind of interesting that it, that it probably has some built-in uh, mastering functions to it. Undo, re uh, redo, delete, that's kind of, that's kind of cool. Uh, auto punch, you can punch in. It has an a, a input jack for a foot switch for punching 
in and out. I haven't done, I haven't used those with a cassette deck yet. So just, uh, maybe someday I'll get a pedal and we'll mess with that. Uh, there's a USB host output, uh, or that's the USB. Um, I think you can connect this to uh, like a computer to offload your files or to uh, use this as an audio interface. I'm not sure about that, but as a uh, MIDI out, and then this is USB host. And I'm not exactly sure what that's for either. In the manual, it says something about a CD burner. So I don't know. And then here's your uh, flash card, compact flash card is, is the memory that it takes. This is a one gig card. Uh, when you click the record button, this is the record enable, it tells you on the LCD display how much time you have remaining on your uh, your flash card. So then to record, what we're going to do is we're going to set this up so that uh, I can get the audio into the computer so it <laughs> so when I edit this video everybody can hear it. So I'm going to pull up my Pro Tools. I've already created a couple tracks, a stereo track and the master track. And what I'm doing, if you can see over here, I have a uh, Tascam Model 16. This is what I use for my audio interface. And so I'm coming, I'm going to come out of the audio inputs on the Bostex into here so that I can record the audio on uh, Pro Tools so that when I edit everything together, you can actually hear what is coming out of the machine. So let's get that started. Okay. And we don't need to watch that. So we'll go back to this scene here and then come back down. So you have, these are the outputs from, from uh, left and right. And then I've got my phone set up on my audio interface, my go twin audio interface. And, uh, I'm going to pull up garage band and use, um, a drum track from GarageBand into this Fostex. So that'll be my first track. And we'll just do something simple. So if you, okay, I'm gonna press play on my uh, drum track. And if you press the record button once, it record, whoops, I didn't hit it hard enough. Record, it flashes. This uh, en enables your monitoring record monitoring so we'll raise uh channel one and then our master then you can hear hear the drums okay so now that we have our drum track going we are going to hit play record and that'll record and we'll just record i don't know Maybe 20 bars and you can see record play is enabled and up here um, it's counting the bars up there so you can see it counting the bars I don't know if it's tempo it, it seems to be that it's detecting the tempo automatically that's so cool so that's cool Maybe there's some, the reason it does that is because it can quantize or I don't know, there's a rhythm guide on here button. So we'll see what that's all about. Maybe it'll do something uh, like be able to do beats or whatnot. All right, so we'll stop it. Post recording, it says something on there. Please wait. So now it must have saved it to the uh, uh, flash drive. So we'll turn off our drum track on our phone. And we shouldn't need that again, so just set that aside. Okay, so now we'll take record enable off. And then, neat thing is, it's got a rewind button, <laughs> just like a cassette deck. 
can see it rewinding. Okay, and then we'll hit play and see what that does. There it goes. There you go. So we got our drum track. It's a mono track, but that's fine. A little scratchy. That pot's a little scratchy. But that's fine. Okay, so we got our drum track. So stop, rewind. And then we'll add we'll add a bass track. We'll just do I don't know, 12 bar blues and E or something. Just that we have something to do. Okay. So we'll be right back. Uh, plug back into output A, and uh, I'm not going to use the distortion, but so we have good signal. All right, so now uh, I think we're rewound. We should hear drums as soon as we hit play record. Yep. up already. <laughs> so we'll rewind. I'm supposed to go to the B. Where's my B? Okay. Yeah. I'm not the world's greatest musician, so <laughs> Okay, there we go. Okay, 12 bar. So hopefully we have it right. Did I rewind? Yes, I did. Okay. Okay, so we hit play and record. We should hear our... Okay, we're going to record this again. All right. Here we go. Okay, that's the end. So we hit stop. Take that off record, enable, rewind. I think the rewind is hilarious because you're not, uh, it's not tape, but yet it's rewinding. So, all right, so we'll see what play does. There it is. Okay, so my terrible bass playing, and then I will take, uh, we'll record guitar and see how that distorted guitar sounds. Okay, so now we're going to record enable three, and then that switches, that's channel A. There's a little A in there, I don't know if you can see it. This number down here, track three, changes to an A. That means you're at input A. And then you can probably change it to B, but we don't really need to do that since we're just doing one at a time. So that's fine. And then we're going to try these guitar. Like I said, you got to hit the record button once again to monitor. And then we're in unbalanced 
guitar, and so we're gonna switch this to guitar on the back, and then that gives us our amp modeling. <clears throat> so we'll see what that is like. I got my Firefly that I reviewed a little while back. You got a pick? There's a pick. Shabby. I wouldn't say I would use that if I was doing a serious recording. It sounds a little cheesy. So I would say that amp distortion sound on this thing is is great, but you know if you took this with you on a trip or something and you just wanted to play around with it and you didn't want to drag a bunch of equipment with you, just a guitar and that because it's you can run it off batteries to uh, six AA batteries, so you know it it be good for demoing or creating you know just kind of uh, brainstorming music so. So then we hit play record. Rhythm, track, hit stop, rewind, take that off of uh, off of record enable, and then This is where we could add some uh, reverb. There's hall or room, and uh, let's rewind this again, and then play, and we'll, no solo or mute buttons on it, so that's kind of a drag, but you can listen to just bring the levels down, and then this is your effect send. Not 
the greatest reverb I've ever heard, but... Okay, that works. So rewind it. And, uh, okay, so we have our three tracks. And then we will do track four, lead. We'll do some lead. So record enable that. I think we're going to put our effects sends right on it from the beginning. Use the same amp simulator. that off record enable rewind and okay and then we can uh, we'll pan the lead over to the left a little bit Let's see how terrible this sounds <laughs> bounce looks like one tracks one through four to five six or tracks one through six to seven and eight so I'm not sure how that works so let's do a little uh, little digging on that one okay so I had to refer to the uh, user manual here for to find out how to bounce tracks. And I'll try to pull it up here so you can actually see it. Okay, so basically what we're doing is we're doing a mix down of tracks one through four to uh, channel five, six. So that's what these extra, basically what these extra tracks are for. So you don't have an input. So you really, it's a four track with these extra stereo tracks for mix down. So you can basically, you can bounce uh, one through four to five and six. And if you record something on five and six, you can bounce one through six to seven and eight. And if you record something on all eight tracks, channels, you can bounce to a new file, a new song, a new, you know. So, and then, uh, but I'm not sure where on the new song it it sends it if it's a in if it takes up one of your stereo tracks or how that works but what we're going to do is we're going to bounce one through four to five six so uh, basically use this bounce button one through four to five six 
It even says up there, one through four to five, six. It enables, record enables five, six, and it re record uh, monitors five, six. And then you can, you can actually rehearse it too. Where is that button? Uh, not sure, but you can rehearse the bounce before you actually do it. Okay, so it says raise the fader and master fader. We've done that. Set all the other track faders down to the minimum position. Press play to start playback from the beginning of the song while playing back. Adjust playback levels of tracks one through four using the faders, but we've already got it set where we want it, so we'll just leave it there during the rehearsal. During rehearsal, okay. Press the play to start playback, okay. Okay, so that's just the rehearsal mode. But we don't really need to rehearse, so press re rewind, press play, start from the beginning. Actual track bouncing. Press play while holding down record. After track bounce. Okay, so there you go. Simple as that. You just hold your play button down and there you go. And you can see the levels on five and six. stop just please wait writing it to the uh, takeoff record oops I think so you have to remove there we go you remove your uh, bounce button and rewind and now everything should be bounced to <coughs> excuse me five and six yep there it is but you still got one tracks one through four so so basically it says you re-record over these or delete those tracks i think we'll just record over it so we're going to record enable monitor and we're going to add a little bit of reverb and we'll throw a microphone on here and i supposedly can use uh A condenser mic with phantom power so we'll see we'll plug in our xlr we will switch this over to mic line and then we will Bring over our condenser mic. Bang, 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 banging things all over the place. Okay, so there we go. Microphone. And uh, we should have some input. Check, check, check. Okay, so now we need to figure out how to do the uh, phantom power. So let's refer back to our PDF of our Oops, what happened? There we go. So let's see if we can find 
phantom power. It's probably a setting in. the menu I'm guess I'm guessing so let's see phantom power right there okay so we do phantom power on off our recorder is stopped press the menu button and go to jog to back is highlighted whoops <laughs> jog to input input right there you can see this I'm kind of holding it out input see fan power on. Okay, I heard it click. So now we back up to top and we should have phantom power. So we'll hit record, enable, record, and there we go. We got some. Now that reverb sounds halfway decent so this is pretty hot let's see check 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 one two whoa that sounds good check one two check check and then i found out in the uh manual that uh, you can set the, uh, you can adjust the reverb and the delay, the time and, you know, uh, the space of the room and things like that. You do all that in the menu. Uh, we won't mess with that, but so here we go. Let's uh, just throw down a, a quick vocal. We'll do, uh, I don't know what we'll do. We'll do something. We'll just make it up. Did I rewind? Yes, I did. So record play and I don't know if this will do the mic simulation on there check 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 yeah that doesn't seem to affect oh I guess it does check 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 so your uh, mic simulation simulation uh, buttons on here are, uh, also impact uh, a mic plugged into the XLR so check 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 dynamic oh that sounds pretty interesting tube mic i like the tube mic we'll keep it there tube 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 check 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 okay record enable and then we will we'll throw another track on there just for I don't know, yeah, as a backing backup track so let's play that and see how horrible it sounds
Okay, there we go. So now we'll do one last track. We'll do, uh, actually we'll do two, two more tracks. We'll do a left and a right uh, back vocal, backing vocals. Check, check, check. Oh, we want our, our uh, echo, our reverb. There we go, look at that, oh yeah. Okay, here we go. I didn't bring up the volume on the on track one, so I couldn't hear the vocals. Rewind. I love how it rewinds because it's so it's just like a tape. It's so cool. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. record enable we'll just pan that to the left we'll keep it there turn it down pan this to the right uh keep the uh reverb on record enable uh channel three check 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 check, check, check. okay and i rewound did i no i did not okay rewind and then we'll just throw another backing vocal on there for Anyway, that gives you an idea. And then now if you notice that the, uh, because the volume is up on the uh, record tracks, you hear sort of me breathing and stuff into the microphone, where if you were using a DAW, you would just trim that stuff out. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna bounce uh, tracks one through six to, to seven and eight, but we'll actually do some mix down so that we can bring the faders up when the vocals are ready to come in so you don't hear all that lip smacking and breathing and stuff like that. So we will do... I guess we're done with the microphone, so we can just unplug that. So then we come over here to... Uh, you press that twice and it takes you to, it record enables seven and eight and it's going to record one through six to seven and eight. So, and we are, we didn't rewind. We got to rewind. Always rewind. Please 
be kind, rewind. Okay, we're ready. Okay, so we're going to bring these faders down so we don't hear that, you know, that mouth sounds. And we'll hit play record. Oh, wait a minute. So we take the bounce off, bring all these levels down, and we'll just play it on track seven and eight, see how it sounds. You won't hear it right away because I didn't bring the fader up until it had already started. Actually, oh, I didn't rewind. <laughs> And I'm not sure if they they have that rewind thing in there just at, for like nostalgic purposes because it is digital. So you think you could hit rewind and it would just instantly bounce to the beginning, but it doesn't. It actually counts, you know, the the time like it's a real tape rewinding. So I, I wonder what the thinking is behind that. Tascam, or Fostex rather, Fostex MR8 MK2. It's a pretty cool little machine. It's uh, It does a fair amount. Uh, it's pretty impressive. And, uh, you know, the fact that it's battery uh, operated, you can put batteries in it. If you kept uh, a good stock of rechargeable AAA batteries, you could, you could use this on the road. Uh, it does have, like I said, the uh, uh, DC adapt, you know, the AC, uh, 12 volt. So you can plug it into the wall if you're, if you're in a hotel room or, or whatever on vacation. So it's a kind of a neat little machine. And, uh, I think, uh, I think, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm torn as to whether I will keep it or not, but it might get sold because this, this particular model is, uh, in mint condition and obviously it works and I'll make sure I delete that song before <laughs> before I sell it but anyway I'd like to explore some of the other features of it uh, it does auto punch in uh, you can punch in with a foot pedal you can set your punch in and out points like you can on your DAW um, and it's got some different modes in it uh, and the mastering that's another thing I'd like to try out you can set your your mastering so that when you're bouncing to uh, so we could actually set uh, bounce seven, you know, seven and eight to a new file, and then set your mastering when you bounce, so that you you have different, you know, what says bright, natural, powerful, whatever, you know, and then uh, a lot of other buttons for different things because you can do, I think, some pretty complex editing with this, but you know, if you got a DAW 
that's where you want to do your editing. But you can probably export stems from this, and uh, that would be kind of cool too. So anyway, there you go. The uh, already set up Fostex MR8 MK2. I'm Jay Salen. This has been the Guitar Dungeon. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.